Hey guys, Steven here back with another video and today I'm going to do a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to set up a website on Wix. Wix is one of my favorite website builders and today this video is actually sponsored by Wix. So if you guys check the link in the description, you guys can start and follow along with this tutorial. If you guys enjoy this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and with that being said, let's get straight into it. So in this tutorial, I'll be breaking down step-by-step -step how I'm going to create this site for myself. Wix is great for making not only websites and blogs, but also e-commerce stores and portfolios. So I'm going to basically make one for my small business and you guys are going to be able to see the finished product and the process of doing so. So the first thing you want to do is go ahead and click the link in the description and make an account. Um, after you've done that, you can press create new site right here. So right here, it's going to ask what type of website I want to create. So for me, I'm planning to sort of showcase my work and the type of work that my small business creates. And if you guys don't know, I'm a photographer and videographer, so I'm going to basically create a small portfolio for my website, but I don't want to just add photos. I want to add other stuff, but let's just get started with this part. So I'm just going to select photography, very specific niche topic. If you guys have a small business, but don't know what this would fall into, maybe business would work or you can press other if you're unsure, but I'm just going to press photography because it seems very specific and I think it would work for my website. Now Wix will show me a bunch of different photography website templates. You can choose from any of them, uh, but these are the recommended ones. And typically these websites look the best when it comes to displaying certain types of work. I'm actually going to choose this one because this collage style looks really cool. So before you actually edit, you can actually view it. So you can view a full demo. So it's almost like an example website that you can actually interact with. You can also see the mobile view, which is important because most people nowadays are using their phones to access websites. So right here, you can see a mobile version of the site. It looks really, really nice. So when it comes to actually editing the site, all you really have to do is edit the placeholder. So there's like photos, I would just replace the photo. There's text, I would just replace the text. The social media icons, I would adjust them as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and select the template and edit this site. So right here, we're on the editor. So the most basic thing is menus and pages. So if you're trying to navigate to different pages, you wanna edit different pages, you would just press on site menu and you can go on different pages. So right now there's six different pages, but let's just say you wanna create a sub menu and you want to create a page underneath another page. All you wanna do is click and hold on the page that you wanna create the sub menu for and you just want to move it right. So I'm actually going to do this for client showcase because it seems a little bit more related than the welcome page. So when I press preview here, I'm actually able to navigate through the site. Right now, if you try to navigate and press on these menus, it wouldn't work. You would have to navigate through the menus and pages option. But with preview, I'm actually able to see basically what the site would be if I publish it. So if I go to preview, you can see if I hover over portfolios there. So this is just a great way to organize your pages if you have multiple that are related. So let's just say you have an about us section. Maybe you would have a team section under about. That's just an example you can use. Maybe under client showcase, I could do different brands and companies I've done work for. That's a great way to organize your pages because you do not want to have like 20 different tabs. If you have any questions when it comes to things, you can actually press a question mark and it brings up the help center, which basically explains what is what and how you can do certain things in the site menu options. You can also click on the three dots for each page and it shows a bunch of different settings. Like for example, you can rename it. So I'm just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go to the main page. I'm just gonna edit it. So I wouldn't need this. I'm gonna double click on the text right here. And here you can see some of the text settings. So you can change the type of font right here. I want something a little bit bolder. So I'm gonna choose Work sense semi bold. You can also upload fonts, which is cool. And I'm gonna make it all caps. And I'm basically gonna type Steven. I'm gonna make this wider and fan. And I'm gonna just move it to the left right here. And I'm gonna adjust the background. So to adjust the background, you wanna press change background. And then you wanna select image. You can also have it be a certain color, like white or black. And you can also set it as a video. And let's just say you select the color as black for the background. You can also apply this to all other pages, which saves you a lot of time. When it comes to the header and the footer, you can also apply to other pages instead of doing it for each individual page, which saves you a lot of time because you can do it in bulk. So let's just go to images here. You can add site files. So basically site files will stay here so you don't have to upload them. Once you upload them once, they're gonna stay here. So an example of a site file would maybe be a logo that you're gonna use often in different pages. And once again, this saves you time because you don't have to keep uploading them. But because I haven't uploaded anything yet, we can press upload media. There's also an option to get royalty free images from like Unsplash um, in case you don't have your own images. So if you're running a basketball camp, for example, you can just search up basketball 
and it'll show a bunch of different basketball images you can use. And these are free to use. You don't have to pay or anything like that. I'm going to upload my own images right here. So I just uh, downloaded a couple images of mine. I'm going to choose this picture of Daniel Caesar. Also a dark image, so I'm able to see the text if I uh, change the background. So right here, I was easily able to change the background. I don't want to apply to other pages because this is like the welcome page and it's going to be different than the rest of the pages. You can even go further and adjust this background image. So if you go to settings, you can, uh, for example, have the color behind it black and I can lower the opacity and I'll basically just make the image a little bit darker if it's too bright. You can also add scroll effects and you can change the scaling and positioning. So I'm going to go to portfolio and I'm going to change this up a little bit. So for this, right now we're selecting a Wix gallery. You can change the settings of the gallery, how the layout is. So if you go to layout, you can change it from a grid to a column to a slideshow. And to basically add like a gallery like this, you just want to go to add and you want to go to gallery. So these are sort of the elements you can add to your pages. And it's very easy because you can easily drag it onto your page. Let's just say I want to use this 3D carousel. This looks really cool. I can drag it down here and that's it. And you may be wondering what this checkered line is. Basically on some devices, this would be the cutoff point and you wouldn't see past this part. Basically, if you keep your images and other elements within this box right here, you're guaranteed that you're able to see it on all devices because it'll look much different on mobile than desktop. So a rule of thumb is you want to just keep it within these lines. Now I'm going to actually add my photos. So I'm going to go to manage media and I'm just going to add all my photos seven here, which is enough to see how it looked like in a gallery. And now these are imported as site files. So if I ever need to go back, I don't have to upload them again. And I can highlight all of them very easily like this. I'm going to press add to page and I would have to delete the other ones. So once again, I can just highlight all of them and then press delete. If I press done, my photos are in a slideshow right now. I might actually want to make the layout a little bit different, maybe back to grid. And you can also adjust sort of like how stretched this is. Let's just say you do want to keep it within this box and you don't want to take up the entire screen, you can press right here and you can uncheck this, you know, keep within these parameters. I've noticed when you uh, stretch to full width, it looks really good on desktop, but not as good on mobile. So you're going to have to sort of balance that out. I'm also just going to adjust this header because for some reason the text moved and I'm just going to change the name to Steven Van and Steven Van. So very quickly, I've already transformed this. It seems like this is also off a little bit. And I'm just going to move this social bar here. And I'm going to set the social links real quick. So right now for each um, icon, there's a link attached to each of them. So I'm going to type in my Facebook, my Twitter, and my Instagram. And just a little bit of advice. Usually you want to open it as a new window just because you don't want to interrupt the user's experience on your website and have them go back to your page. You want to have it open in a new page. So now that we're done, basically the main page when it comes to like a photography portfolio, we can go on to the background, which I already explained. We've also explained this part where there's different elements you can add. So if you are adding a contact page, there's a contact form you can adjust. And you can see there's just a lot of different elements, buttons, and they're all drag and drop, which is easy. And for 99% of these elements, if you just click on them, there's going to be a settings option where you can adjust that form or that gallery or that button. Next we have themes. So themes basically adjust the color and text of your website. So if you wanted like the background layers or maybe the headers and the text to be a certain color, you could adjust that. I think I like it how it is like black and white, but you can always change the theme. I think when it comes to this, you want to keep it as simple as possible. Um, most sites will look just fine black and white. And then if you go to text, you can adjust each of the text themes. So when you are typing in text, you can basically select one of these themes and it'll change the font to those. Instead of individually finding different fonts, you can just click on different text themes that you created. So if you have certain templates you want to create, you can create them here. For example, heading two, I believe is the text right here. So if I wanted to change this in any text that had this font, I can automatically change it by just adjusting the theme of the text. So once again, this is a very cool bulk feature option. Next is my favorite part of Wix is their apps. So Wix has a bunch of apps that you can 
check out in their Wix app market. So right here, these are the ones recommended for me. So MailChimp is one that I use on my website personally, and it's really good with email lists. So if you're selling a product in your small business, maybe you're starting an e-commerce store on Wix, maybe you can collect an email list and market to them. And it'll be a lot easier to do that than manually do it yourself. Maybe you want to add a live chat and a chat bot to your website for customer service. You can do that very easily. So let me just press add right here. If I just move this, you can place it to the bottom right where uh, live chats usually are. And this is just an example. And that's just one out of many different apps. There's ones for drop shipping. There's ones for accounting, print on demand, analytics, um, and it goes on and on and on. So this is actually my favorite part of the Wix service is the apps that they provide because they're very unique and super, super helpful. Next is media, which I sort of already uh, went into. There's also an option to add a blog. If you wanted to add this blog section, you would have just answered the questions initially when this video first started that you wanted to start a blog. But let's just say you didn't know you wanted one and now you want to add one, you can just press add now. And the reason why you had to add it separately is just because a blog page is going to be different than a normal page that you customize. They're going to have a different layout and that sort of stuff. And you want to manage it a little bit different. So right here, once again, there's a setting option. If you click on um, any element, so if I press settings right here, I can change the layout and design. And to actually add posts, I just press manage posts and I can delete any, I can add any. So I just press create new posts right here. Next is another option to add bookings. So if you're a service business, for example, similar to mine, where you're taking on clients, you can maybe schedule consulting meetings, appointments to provide quotes, or to book like a photo shoot or something like that. So similar to the blog page, you would need separate settings and a separate dashboard from the rest of the pages because it is a different type of page. And lastly, you have marketing and SEO, which is a big factor in how well your site performs and once again there's a separate dashboard for this as well so what i like about wix is it's very well organized they really know what needs priority and once i know that i want to finish and make it live i can press publish i can also connect a domain that i have so you can actually purchase a domain through wix or you can connect an existing one you already have so you can see here i already have a domain connected you can also press buy a domain search it up so let's just say Steven Van. I know it's not available because I've searched this up already, but let's just say I want stevenvan.org. You can purchase this very easily through Wix. Um, otherwise, you would have to go through a third party and a different domain service. And it takes much longer to actually connect your domain. It may be cheaper, but, but I like that there's an option to do it through Wix, which is almost instant connection. We really just adjusted the homepage and added some pictures to a portfolio. But the great thing is we're able to do that in basically 10 minutes have my domain connected and sort of understand how to build this site. So if I press enter site, you can see everything works perfectly fine and you can even go on mobile and check this out. But that's essentially it for this video. This is a very brief breakdown, but honestly, there's not much you really need to know about creating a website on Wix. You guys can sign up for your Wix website and start creating a website now with the link in the description. And yeah, my name is Steven and I'll see you in the next one.